So far in the minuscule slice of time that we have been asking questions, science has eventually found most of the answers. There are, however, still some questions that are still frustratingly resolutely unanswered, and some that are perhaps even unanswerable altogether. I don't mean why do they sell hot dogs in tins of 12 and hot dog buns in packs of 8, or what is Jules' appeal, I mean the really, really deep, important sciencey stuff. Maybe it's too much to expect of us to have figured out the deepest mysteries of the universe in the paltry few hundred years we've even been investigating, but still, that doesn't stop us asking. My name is Adam Cleary, and these are seven mind-bending questions about the universe. Number seven, what is the universe expanding into? So, when something expands, it has to have a medium to expand into. This, for example, is Wilborn expanding, and he's doing it into my personal space. So, surely it stands to reason that if the universe is expanding, which it is, then it must be expanding into something. Well, the answer is, it depends. The thing about physicists, you see, is that they have a habit of talking about the universe in terms of four-dimensional space-time, which is, of course, impossible for us to imagine, and then suggest that the three-dimensional universe is embedded in and expanding into the fourth dimension. Picture it as though you are a two-dimensional being on the surface of a three-dimensional balloon that is being inflated. You can't perceive the third dimension, so from your perspective, everything is moving away from everything else along every conceivable plane, and what's more, there is no edge. Now simply scale it up a dimension and you have yourself the finite, unbound universe expanding into four-dimensional space. I mean, I'm saying all of this, the simple answer is, we don't really know. Number six, what was before the Big Bang? Alright, so theology and God and whatnot to one side, if time began at the Big Bang, which it very well might have, then this question is nonsense. In relativity, time is said to stop as you approach a singularity, so if the universe was at the point of singularity at the Big Bang, then time would have been at a total standstill too. Some physicists, however, don't like this explanation. There are other theories that suggest that our universe was born inside a black hole in another universe, and that black holes in our universe are in turn belching out their own universes. But the truth is simply that we just don't really know, and yes, you're right, there is a theme here, well observed. Number five, will we ever find aliens? One of the two following statements is true. Either A, we are not alone in the universe, or B, we are alone in the universe. Whichever one is correct, the day we find out might be the most important in our entire history. Sometimes when you look around our own planet, it seems inconceivable that there couldn't be more like it out there. However, given the sheer scale of not only space but time as well, the chances of coming across any little green men suddenly appear to be vanishingly small. But if we were to find that life in any form had existed on, say, Europa, it would immediately double the number of known inhabited planets in the universe. For life to arise once could just be a fluke, but for it to arise twice on two planets in the same solar system, yes, I know, Europa's a moon, shut up, drastically increases the probability that life is common. Number four, where is the rest of it? We should probably get some posters made up or something because 96% of the universe is, like, missing. When scientists tried to tot up the sum total of all the matter and energy in the universe, they found they were coming up significantly short. Now, yes, dark energy, whatever that is, makes up the largest part of this mysterious hidden universe, but we have no way of working out exactly how much. For all we know, aliens could be living in the 96% of the universe that we can't detect with eyes that can see it in all of its glory. Just imagine them all sitting at home, gathered round a screen, watching some alien version of me do a 10 things that could be in the other 4% of the universe list. Number three. What are numbers? Well, go on then, what are they? You probably don't go more than an hour at a time without using numbers in some form, but there is no scientifically accepted definition for what they actually are. I know, yes, I hear you, numbers are points, squiggly lines, factors, whatever, but are they real things, or are they simply the best method we have for describing the universe around us? So far, the vast majority of reality has proved itself to be computable with numbers, but what about every everything that isn't. Do numbers just cease to exist there? Whilst it's tempting to say that numbers are simply human constructs, there is a good argument to be made that there is something fundamentally quantifiable about the universe, and our numerical representation of that could just be allowing us to glimpse it. Number two, is it real? 
Yes, I'm actually asking that. Is the universe, the thing that contains you and me and pizza and goth Kate Blanchett, actually real? Is it not? In fact, just one big illusion. There are a lot of people, including actual scientists and the Entourage theme tune made human and rich Elon Musk, who think this whole thing being an illusion is almost an absolute certainty. I shall try to explain. In the past 20 years or so of the computer age, we have made such massive strides in the fields of simulated and virtual reality that it stands to reason that it would be possible for any sufficiently advanced species to create a perfectly simulated universe. Now, it would also be perfectly possible that a self-aware computer program would be capable of simulating its own universes in a kind of technological equivalent of Russian dolls. If we accept that all of that is possible, which it is, then the chances of us being the very first civilization, i.e. the real one, are extremely slim. It's actually much, much, much more likely that we are part of the near infinite number of subsequent simulations that has been created from the first. Number one, why is there something rather than nothing? Yeah, admittedly, this one does sound stupid, but it's actually a really, really important question. We tend to take our existence for granted because, well, we spend most of it doing things like making list videos and thinking about goth Kate Blanchett, but the very presence of not only us, but the universe in general is reliant on a very specific and almost improbable set of physical laws coming together. The thing is, there's absolutely nothing about physics that suggests it has to be this way. It's all some big, stupid accident. Fundamentally, we don't know why there appears to be way more matter than antimatter. The two are created in the same events and should, by all rights, annihilate each other immediately. And yet, here we are, surrounded by a universe made of matter, without which nothing could possibly exist. So, what the hell? 